Good morning. Elder Matt's coming in a moment. But I want you guys to sing this with me, okay? Here we go. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks, sing for all. Sing with me now. Thanks. I give you thanks. Good. Sing, everybody. Do you mean it? I am so blessed. Do you mean it? I give you thanks. Come on, Elder Matt. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Thank you. Andrea, do you have anything, anything at all? What was that? Oh, okay, we'll do that at offering time. How's that sound? So that's the picture that she's got for us. And we got what candy? And we do have a special song at offering. So, uh... Stick around. <laughs> That's totally up to you. Whatever, whatever you think's appropriate, you just be in tune. So is everybody in here? Because what I got to say is important. Zach, is everybody in here? Why not? Roger, I had to wait on you last time. Good, Nance. This is very important. Are you ready, Linda? You are ready. You came prepared, ready. I wish my wife was in here because I'd get my glasses. Nikki, can I have my glasses, please? What's that? She's here now. I've been looking for her for the last 10 minutes. Look at it. Hey, Nikki Hagler, everybody. Give it up for Nikki Hagler. Thank you very much. Woo! That is my smoking hot wife that I am married to until death do us part. And I'll tell you that again, till death do us part, Nikki. You can't get rid of me. She may get rid of me. She'll have to kill me first. <laughs> a lot? I mean, gee whiz. A lot! Now, quiet in the front. <laughs> oh, Roger, I'm glad you're here. Yes, sir. You do? Good, you had to round them up. All of Greenfield sitting in four seats right there in the corner. <laughs> Glenda, we're not starting without you. Hello, the first lady of the gathering place, everybody, Glenda Piper. The tick behind your talk, Pastor John. Like I said, I got something really important to say. And the only thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna say what God said. So if we could please stand for the reading of the Word of God.
1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 I asked myself a question this morning why am I doing what I'm doing why am I here what is the purpose behind Matt Hagler getting up showing up to Sunday school class late Tony and being here among all of you why is that? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable uncorrupted and unfading kept in heaven for you who are being protected by God's power through the faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time you rejoice in this though now for a short time you've been distressed by various trials so that the genuineness of your faith more more valuable than gold, which perishes, though refined by fire, that's the gold that perishes, so that this may result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You love him, though you have not seen him. Now you believe in him and rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy why am I here? Because you are receiving the goal of your faith, which is the salvation of your souls. I am here this morning because I am in the process of receiving the goal of my faith, faith being a gift from God. That's in Scripture. I didn't muster it up on my own, Kathy. That was a gift. I'm in the process of of salvation. What is, what is this salvation? What did we just talk about? That men have sailed the world at different times in search of eternal life. This morning in Sunday school, we were, we were just thinking about our day, our week, whatever happened kind of negative, you know, and, and, and it's very easy for us to, to think, oh, this is terrible, this is a terrible place, we can get caught up in, in complaining and, and all that and, and, and how ugly of a place we live in. And London was sitting in there with us. How old are you, London? Nine? I said, well, let's ask London what kind of place she lives in. And it was glorious. It was beautiful. It wasn't corrupted. It wasn't hateful. It wasn't nasty. And she said with the very words that she wanted to live forever. She enjoyed this so much that she wants to live in it forever. So Candy, if we have such a desire to have eternal life, why do we have to call this so bad? Is it just a matter of perspective? Can't I read this right here? and be joyful and be happy and jump up and down and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for where I am today and I thank you for what you're going to do with me tomorrow. And far be it for Mike and Nikki Hagler to teach our children that this is 
the ugliest, nastiest existence that you can ever be in. And whoa, I'll be glad when the Lord takes me out of here because I've got a screwed up vision of where I am. I am not going to live this life, this existence, the rest of eternity, because eternity starts today. It's not like I cease to exist when my body dies. I just keep on walking. So if eternity starts today, at what point am I going to rejoice? Exactly. Right now. Thank you, Kathy. And everybody else around me, my children and the other children that are within my sphere of influence are not going to look at this life like it's ugly, it's nasty, and I can't wait for God to come back and get me. If Jesus is so, if we're so, why are we so anxious to get to heaven if Jesus is so anxious to get here? He says, I'm coming back. Right? Good word. So Candy, we're going to worship today like we are eternal beings in Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father, uncorrupted full of grace, covered with love, lavished with gifts that we do not even have the ability to see. But we can still believe in them and know that they're out there just ready to be grabbed hold of. Father, I want to thank you for this house. I want to thank you for the people in here. Lord, you are all knowing, all worthy. And today, I'm going to live my life into eternity. Usher us into a, into a worshipful, loving, atmosphere of praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody.
Oh 
us like Paul instructed Timothy to stir up the gift that he received by the laying on of our hands. Paul and some of the elders had laid hands on Timothy. He was a younger man. They laid hands on him and he had received the gift of the Holy Spirit at that point in time. So as believers in here today, uh, who, and who all is a believer in Christ Jesus today? You've confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the risen Son of God. Then with that confession, we have that same Holy Spirit sealed on the inside of us that Paul was telling Timothy to stir up. And then when Stephanie sings about calling out to dry bones, us, we human beings all have this tendency to just start to take things for granted, don't we? Uh, something new and exciting will be new and exciting for a minute and then that's just kind of old news and we need to move on to something else whether it's our homes or our cars or our friends even sometimes sometimes even our husbands and wives right in the culture that we live in but anyway this song whoever wrote this song is admonishing the church of Jesus Christ that when you get in those dry places in your life which we all do where you're just kind of okay, I'm going to church because I know that that's the right thing to do. And okay, I'll just walk up front there and I'll stand there and I'll do my best to worship, but I'm not really feeling it. And we all do that. Everybody on this stage does that as well. But while we sing this song, maybe we, like Paul told Timothy, should start to stir up the power of the Holy Ghost that's living on the inside of each one of us and to really call out to God today that those dry places in our lives will come back to life and that the Holy Spirit will baptize our souls, our mind, our will and emotions. And we, with, with, with a genuine, a genuine heart, will get focused on the fact that we are God walking around in the earth right now. He has 
chosen to indwell us and set his kingdom up on the inside of us. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So don't get freaked out by me saying that you're God walking around on the earth. He's the one that put that into motion, not me. I know in my humanity what a failure I am. Trust me. I know that more than anybody in the building. But I also know that if God decided to set his kingdom up on the inside of me, that means he wants to work together with me in this earth. And he is love. So that means that we are love walking around in this earth. And there is a kingdom and a spirit inside of every one of us believers that maybe we all just need to stir up this morning. Maybe we do need to call out to those dry bones and those dry areas of our lives and ask the Holy Spirit to burn inside of us this morning while Stephanie sings a little bit more to us. Oh God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love, Rescue every daughter. Yes. Bring us back the wayward son. Oh, the wayward times. And by your spirit breathe upon them. Show the world that you alone can save. Cause you alone can save.
up here with the kids and let's join together. up here, Scott. Put them right in the middle. Come on, buddy. <coughs> Lord, we are so blessed to have every one of these children. They're here and we can pour into them and mold and shape their lives. Pray that their lives are molded and shaped for good. They will be a powerful influence their entire lifetime. When their peers, as they're growing up, and as they're grown adults, Lord, help them to understand the power that we have in the presence of the Lord that lives in us. Let the blood of Calvary cover them and protect them. They are blessed. Their homes are blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys.
this morning, Pastor John, and Stuart's really sick. Peg and I go way back to the Record Herald when I first moved here in 19, what, 80-ish? And I love you, and I love Stuart, and if it'd be okay, Pastor John, I think before we sing this last song, because Jesus carries our healing in his hands, we could anoint Peg and pray for Stuart this morning. And if by chance you're watching Stuart, I just want to say, hey, cousin, I love you because I love these people, and I believe in healing. God has healed me many times, and I believe in healing. So, Peg, would that be okay with you if we anoint you? For your hubby?
understand that your name was given by the Father to be the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, everything we deal with can be taken care of. We speak that name into existence. We speak it into our situation and it becomes materialized in our world and in our dimension that we live. But do we really realize that? That at the name of Jesus, the demons actually tremble. The circumstances coming against us are subject to that name. Our attitude, everything we deal with, in the name of Jesus. There's life and death in our tongue. Speak life. Speak Jesus. For he is the author of life and the finisher of our faith. So, Lord, we stand on that, and we know that. We hear it. We know it. But help us to live it in Jesus' name. We pray for everybody that's in this place that will leave out of here today with a new resolve and new authority and new power. I pray that that will happen here and with all the other churches that are meeting in our town today and around the world, brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us to love one another. Lord Jesus, help us just to love one another. That's what you prayed before you were going back to the Father. That the, oh, they did just that they would just love one another. Heavenly Father, like you and I love one another. So we're we're to love one another like God and Jesus love one another. Amazing thing. Help us to go there. Jesus name. Amen. I love you. life a reality, so is death. They both exist, correct? We're, getting, we're going to take an offering here in a little bit, but first we're going to have something a little different. We're going to have a little bit of ministry time. And there are those of us in here that This is First Fruit Sunday, so I, so I have finances on my mind at this moment, at this period in time in the service. But it, it, it doesn't always, it's, not, it's about life, not just finances, okay? The kingdom, there's a lot that happens in the kingdom, you know? There's families that live within the kingdom, and it's just, it's an economic kingdom. It's a family functional kingdom. talking about life and death, Pastor. There have been more times when I look at my financial situation that I have seen the death. That I have been only been able to see what I do not have. The only thing I could see is what someone had that I wanted. Or what I hoped and dreamed for was never going to happen. That's what I could see. And it was an impossibility. And it would have a hold of me. That's what I've seen a lot of. And there are many of us in here that can be 
in the same place. Not everybody, okay? Maybe you've been there and you're not today. Maybe you are there today. Maybe you're like, well, I don't know, I was on the street. I just showed up. I don't know what you guys are talking about. But some of us sitting in here, that thing is so visual. It is so in color. It is so real. When somebody stands up here and talks about it, it's like they're grabbing a hold of everything inside of you and squeezing the life right out of you. It has got a hold of you to the point that you can't even function because it's always on your mind daily. And you know it and you can see it. And we talk about a God that we're able to bring those things before that we can hold these things up to and say, Lord Jesus, just take them. Take this burden from me because it's more than I can handle. And he will do that. Isn't that right, Candy? Because his yoke is easy and light. And then there's those of us in here that at some point in time, they made a decision to change your mind. To go from death to life. And we can be in between. I can be one way one day and another the other day. I mean, look at what Paul said that one time. I do what I don't want to do and I don't want to do what I do. And then he goes on and it's the most schizophrenic passage I've ever read in the Bible. And he wrote most of it. But there are those of us that took a step at one point in time and decided that, you know, if this thing is real, if I'm going to say that I believe in this eternal life, if I'm going to say that, you know what, I do believe my sins have been forgiven, I do believe that I am an eternal being, and I'm going to walk this thing out, and that that sowing into the kingdom is part of eternal living. Living in the kingdom, this is part of living in the kingdom. I'm going to do this too. Yeah, I'm going to believe I'm saved and I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to take this next step. And I'm going to take this next step. And, and you sowed a seed and you saw fruit. And you're like, holy cow. And and you sowed another seed and you saw more fruit and while there are some of us that are thinking about the death there are some of us in here that are thinking about the life and look what it's brought about and to you it is very visual it is in color it is exciting it puts butterflies in your stomach. It makes you want to get your checkbook out and sow into someone's ministry because you know that at some point in time, you're going to reap a harvest. It's not a health and wealth, you know, Pastor John needs a new airplane thing. <laughs> it ain't about that. Because I can stand up here and tell you it's not. I was sowing into the kingdom long before I ever met you, Pastor John, and it's been at work whether you were in my life or not. And so, I'm going to pray. And, and those of you that, that are thinking, this thing's killing me. I can't take it anymore. I'm tired of being bound in chains by the, the thought of what I don't have. I want you to hold it up and I want you to give it away. Give it to the Lord, offer it as a sacrifice to Him and say, Father, just remove this thing from me. I don't know how to do it. I can't do it on my own. I'm giving it to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And then those of you that, that already are excited to, for, for the offering time, for the first fruits time, I want you to take that that moment, that, that time that you sowed that specific seed where you saw the fruit, 
whether it was the very first time or, or another time, I want you to take that thought that you have in your mind right now after I pray. And I want you to get up. And I want you to go to someone. And I want you to tell them. I want you to minister to them. And tell them how God worked in your life. And encourage and edify and build them up. And who knows, they may have a story that's way better than yours. Or they may also be the ones that are holding something up trying to get rid of it. Lord, this is a time that I believe your spirit is going to move in this house. It's going to move in a mighty powerful way. And Lord, I have thought there have been times when 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 I want to when I want to share something with somebody and, and things have gone too fast and they've moved to the next level and I haven't had time. Well, Father, now is a time where we're going to just take a little bit and I want you to move on your people and share some stories and encourage them in their faith. In Jesus' name. So please, just take a few minutes and encourage somebody. You've got the house. It's yours. Roam about. Get up.
So we're going to take the offering up front. So if, if we could have just a two or three ushers to bring the to bring the plates up. And I've talked to a few people about ministering and prayer. If you guys would want to come up, please. You too, Candy. And we're gonna have a, we're gonna have some special music during the offering. And as you bring your offering up, and you're, and you're, you feel the need to, to have someone pray for you. I've got the Lord's pointed out some people that that we're going to have up here, and if you want prayer, just ask them. Just talk to them and, and let them know what's on your heart. If you want them to pray for your offering, over your offering. Let that happen. And who are we bringing this up to? We're bringing this up to the Lord Himself. So, Father, bless this. Bless this offering. And bless those who are bringing it up. In Jesus' name. He became sin. Who knew? sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross a love so Before Pastor John comes, and I ask him if it's okay right now, uh, we have a gal that, come on up here, Brittany, that has been coming to our church for several months now. Her name is uh, Brittany Bacon Hester. And Brittany, uh, where is it that you work now? I work at the Counseling Source. The Counseling Source here in town. Yeah. And Brittany's young, as you can see, and she moved in to this area 
from Pike County was looking for a church and you said you told me you came to this church the first time and I felt the Lord and she told me she said this is my church and she immediately came up and introduced herself the bacon hesters from the Pike County area John you probably know them is Mary Jane around here anywhere with her mic um, so anyway, uh, Brittany sings with her family on the weekends, and when she's not singing with her family, she attends our church and is, is very much wanting to be a part of this body of believers. So I wanted to ask her to sing a song for us today, and as always, I want to ask you folks to be uh, completely supportive while she sings. I've sung all my life, and it's the biggest deal ever when you sing to people and they're not just sitting there looking at you like this, but they are involved in what you're doing and encouraging the person that's up here. And you guys do that. So I'm preaching to the choir anyway, so go ahead.
you, Jesus, for everything you do, God, for who you are. God, we, we pray that you will bless the pastor, Lord, as he brings the message, Lord. We pray that you will have your way, God. I pray that you will bless John, Lord. I pray for your anointing. I pray, God, that you will touch any hearts here, Lord, that don't know you. God, anyone that's discouraged. God, anybody that's depressed. God, anybody that is just very weary, Lord. I pray that you will just touch them, Lord, through John's message, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with me? Everybody stand up. I want to pray, Lord. The theme this morning that you have given us is that we're walking through this life and you've provided everything we need in the physical and in the spiritual realm. And we bring those blessings as we believe and as we speak and as we allow you to operate. But since we're all human, since we live in this world that is stained by sin and we're actually born into it, there are things that are troubling there are things that seem to rob our joy. It's hard to be positive when the world's caving in around you. And we know, Lord, that faith is positive and that you are the Father that wants good things for us so that we are to have our joy and be consistent, that our influence can lead other people into the right way. But Lord, I know that there's some folks here that have been going through some stuff and it's hard for everything we're talking about to be real. And I know, Lord Jesus, that this morning you orchestrate what's said because we gave that to you from the very beginning. We ask you to protect everything that's said, to move in every song with some, to have your absolute total will because we don't even know how to worship unless you guide us into worship, and that's according to your word. So with every head bowed, I just wanted to encourage you a little bit. And if there's somebody that would like to have special prayer, I want you to come forward. We can take just a moment. And I don't know what you've been going through. Maybe it has to do with your family. Maybe it has to do with your job. Maybe it has to do with your finances, with your health. All these things that so much affect us. Your relationships. What you deal with day to day. Some of you are thinking right now about those things and it's becoming real in your mind. Don't be intimidated to walk forward and allow the Lord to move in that area in your life that you need help in because there are times every single person in this place needs a divine intervention in some area of their life. And whatever that might be, I want you to just come forward and we're going to have a prayer together before we leave here this morning. Because the Lord orchestrated this service for you.
just a minute. Bless you. Let's gather around like a family. You know, I like to do that. If you were a little bit undecided whether to come forward and pray, you just come. Because when we're together up here, there's a great spirit of the Lord moving among us. And I really felt like this is what the Lord wanted really feeling it. There's victory. It's going to be experienced if we're all together like this. It's a big deal. Lord, I can't know every situation, every circumstance that people go through. And if I did know, I couldn't do a whole lot about it. But Lord, you, you will. Not only can, but you will. It's easy to say, well, Lord, you can. Well, of course, Lord, you can do anything. You created the earth, the earth and the heavens. You created all of it. Yeah, you can. But you will. In Jesus' name. And I'm going to pray that You'll move right down in the middle of the situation that everyone standing here is dealing with. And I know that that's going to happen. And I know it's your desire to do that. So we're going to speak. We're going to speak that positive thought. We're going to know that it is your desire, Lord, to rule and reign in our life. And Lord, if there's anything in the way that's blocking that in our, our lives or in anything that we're thinking or doing, or Lord, just get, get it out. Get, just help us to just crucify that thing, to tear up that fallow ground that's keeping everything from growing in us. Help us all to be good soil because there's things that we need to do. There's far more than we could ever ask or think that you have in store for us. And sometimes we're just hanging on to our ideas and our preconceived ideas and allowing things to disturb us, Lord. You've got a whole lot better in store. You're going to use every situation. You're going to use everything. What Satan means for evil, you're going to turn to good. What we don't understand, you're going to open up our mind and our spirit and our, let us be powerful to tear down strongholds that could be built up in our life over a lifetime. Lord. The things just need to be torn down, dug up released Lord some of the best people around here stand here praying right now I know it's going to happen I know it's going to happen thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for victory we speak life 
We speak victory. We speak power, joy. Speak peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Next Sunday is baptism at Tim Walder's farm. We're going to have a carry-in dinner. Listen very carefully, just a second. The church will provide the meat. You carry in something that we can all eat. Bring your eating utensils with you, okay? But we will have the meat. We got the meat. Also, we've got men's meeting this week. 